Hi. Most of my videos are extemporaneous. In other words, I don't rehearse them. <laughs> and so, you know, sometimes things don't turn out exactly like I would like, but I think that they're more real and, and perhaps more useful than uh, videos that have been heavily uh, edited and so forth. Anyway, that's my story and I'm sticking with it. Uh, by the way, this dot here, this uh, point, is uh, I place it 0, 0.0, 0. Let me, uh, in my profile plan. So every time I open a new plan, I know where 0, 0.0 is. And you, you want to base the drawing basically on, on that point. I decided to mention that in passing. And that's why that point is there and why it's useful. I'm just going to draw a structure. I'm going to create a terrain plane. And uh, based on what I wanted to do, I'm going to uh, marquee select this and rotate it. Yeah. And uh, let's see, I'm going to move the terrain plane back this way. Okay, now with terrain, I don't care about that being off a little bit, it's close enough. I hit the delete key to get rid of it. <clears throat> okay, with terrain, you go to terrain, elevation data. I'm gonna, I never use points. Well, almost never, because a point just modulates the terrain symmetrically from, from the center of the point. And that, that's nature that rarely ever operates that way. What I'm going to do is just use a line. And with terrain, you have to establish one point and another point. So right now, both of these elevation objects are set to zero. And let me just split the screen. I'm going to <clears throat> do an overview camera of this very simple plan and then hit Shift F6. And uh, I'm going to turn it on edge like it's a elevation. Now, in order to get a terrain and see, now here's zero. If I want it to slant from here down to there, and I leave this at zero, let me get out of camera mode. There we go. I'm going to click on this one, open its dialog, and set it to uh, minus uh, eight feet. You'll see what happens immediately. One value, the second value basically a gradient created in, in between. That's very simple. Now over here on this, this one, I'm going to go over here to terrain, elevation data. And this time I'm going to use elevation region because commonly terrain is flat around the house. So I'm going to put a flat region there. See, so now I've flattened it out. Let me uh, tilt it a little bit so you can see better. Just like a real house. And maybe the front yard is flat also. So I'm gonna get rid of this uh, terrain thing here and extend the flat region. So we have a flat front yard and then flat around the house and then it starts dipping down towards that minus eight feet. <clears throat> so, like a lot of things in this software, it just reacts to what you do, how, what, how you set the settings, and uh, where this, I'm going to pull this in, so that there's a little space there. You, there's no initial change. Now, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is uh, go to terrain, elevation, data, I'm going to data, when I'm doing topographic maps, I use the spline because I can make the splines uh, match the contours in a topographical map created by a surveyor. But for this, I'm just going to stick with lines. I'm going to draw a line on the this side of it. Now, it, it comes in set at zero, so it's zero here minus eight feet over here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
set this one, well, it's, okay, it automatically set itself at minus, slightly over minus six feet. Let's make it minus uh, four feet. <coughs> Exceed or reacts as the new values come in. We got zero, minus four, minus eight. I'm gonna copy this to the other side. And for a terrain object to be active, it just needs to be inside the edge. So I'm gonna set it to one inch from the edge. We're using the automatic dimensions and one inch. <coughs> And you can see it's kind of dipping there because in the center, because that's where I told it to be uh, minus eight feet. Well, you can't really see this that well with a standard camera. Let me change it to, uh, yeah, vector view. You can see better. See, there's minus eight, there's minus uh, four, minus four, and it goes from minus eight to minus four, minus eight to minus four. And up here, around the house, it's zero. Let's see, let's move back. There's not a lot of, we got minus four, minus four, and zero. So there's a gradient drop off from here to here and here to here. <coughs> now, I'm not real crazy about the ter terrain wall feature. It's under terrain. Where is it? Uh, <laughs> there it is, terrain wall and curve. Okay, let's just do a straight, keep it simple. I'm gonna give you a straight terrain wall. Well, I didn't click on it hard enough. I was probably on the wrong screen. Let me do it again. Create the terrain wall. And there, there it is. Now, there's not a lot of transition from, I mean, we got zero here, <clears throat> minus four, minus four, and minus eight. Now, what I'm gonna do, well, let's see, let's leave it there. <clears throat> of course, I don't really want it that tall. And I think I want the terrain to, to, to drop off in this case. So I'm going to take this object and we'll make it minus eight. Okay. Not exactly what I wanted, but that's okay. I'll tell you what, for a retaining wall, I think I'll use another object and that's under terrain break. And I'm going to draw that right next to my uh, okay there it is pull it off the edge and I'm going to move it up screen a little bit so it's just on the other side of the retaining see I put it just on the other side of the terrain wall terrain wall <laughs> Okay, that's more like kind of what I had in mind where actually uh, I think I'm going to take this terrain wall and move that over. See, I'm hitting the arrow keys and moving it out and then back. Okay, now I don't want that terrain wall that tall. Let's see if we can alter it in the uh, in its dialog box. <clears throat> Height, okay, I want it 12 inches. Whoops, not 121 inches, 12 inches. Okay, that's a little more realistic. Now these, all these automatic contours, I usually turn those off because I'm working with elevation objects and not contours. Uh, you know, those are cute and they're probably accurate within the software, but they, they help me and their, their ability to help me is zero. So mainly, mainly they just make it harder for me to see the uh, elevation objects, which I do want to uh, work with. I'm looking for display options. Let me go to terrain and turn off uh, 
contours and contours. So, so there's nothing there but uh, elevation objects. Okay, so that's that's one way to do it. Of course, there's, it depends. Like this uh, terrain break is set by default to 120 inches, so it's going to go and then zoop and then down to whatever value this is set to which that doesn't make any sense since it's set to 10. Anyway, <laughs> but it, you get the idea. Okay, now let's uh, take this, I'm gonna take this, uh, yeah, terrain wall and copy it. Over here. <laughs> I like to do accents sometimes. Okay, you can see over here is again it's just sitting there at, at it's a duplicate of this one. And in order to get it, you have to get this terrain break. I'm gonna copy it and bring it over right there. Okay, I'm gonna use the arrow keys and move it down screen until I get the effect I want. Okay, one reason it's not jumping down is because this value hasn't been reset. Let's set it to minus eight feet like I did the other time. We should get a reaction. Yeah, bingo. But the purpose of this video is that there's a cause and effect, and it's directly use the correct the right tool for the effect that you want to create. <clears throat> and uh Terrain is not something you can just open the dialog box and go one, two, three, or impo import a topographical map, and you'll get something so complicated that most computers can't, can't display it on screen. So I like to just work as simply as possible to get the overall effect that I want to present, present the architecture which I'm working on. And I don't worry about <clears throat> the exact veracity of the terrain, but it's just a backdrop for, for what I want to, for the architecture that I'm creating, okay? So I, that should address your question. Now, maybe you had something different in mind, but you can do whatever you wish, as long as you take it slow and make a change, do it in the camera view, or, or like this split screen where you can see the change in, instantaneously. Don't put a bunch of elevation objects in the plan and then look at it because then you don't know which one did what. Okay? Thanks for watching. I hope this helps some people out there who are struggling to get architecture done. Thank you.